In this lecture, we're going to be having a look at how the savannas of Africa are very important in the overall diversity and abundance of birds in general. So Africa is home to approximately 2,300 bird species. And this is mainly because it covers the equator and has two very important oceans which surround it. In Africa, there are about 108 bird families, and 17 of these families are unique to Africa. So the aim of this lecture is to provide you with an overall understanding, brief understanding of the diversity of some of the major bird groups of the African savannas, and focus particularly on the unique species. So just to remind ourselves of what generally what savanna looks like, savanna is a habitat that is dominated by grass and certain in certain places some tree species. These are typical savannas of East Africa where grass is far more clearly far more dominant than the trees. But savannas also grade into several forms of woodland. And although the basic makeup of the vegetation where we have grass and trees is the same, there's generally a higher density of trees, as you would expect in woodland, compared to some of the more classic, in inverted commas, savanna, which you find in East Africa particularly. So as an example, you can find areas such as the larger picture with the lions that is generally quite dense with quite a few um, rather low tree species, but that's one particular type of arid uh, savanna woodland. And then on the bottom right, you can see a more mesic uh, woodland, which is dominated by species such as Marula and Terminalia sericea, which is the silver cluster leaf in a wetter part of South Africa. Now, woodland is, is very important in shaping bird diversity uh, in savanna habitats. Well, why, you might ask? Well, if you compare or consider these two habitats as depicted by the figures, the pictures here, where do you think you would expect to see more bird species? Uh, in the habitat on the left, on the habitat on the right? That's correct. The habitat on the left. And this is because bird species diversity is affected by three things. Overall habitat structure, the complexity of that habitat, and then its heterogeneity or its patchiness. And habitats that have got more complex architecture, so for example woodlands, tend to support a greater diversity and species richness of birds than structurally simple habitats like grass dominated habitats. And this is because these sorts of habitats provide more resources and potentially more segregation at the microhabitat or niche level for the birds. And this was really elegantly done by MacArthur and MacArthur in 1961, working in South America, uh, when the authors found that habitat, bird species richness, sorry, was positively correlated with foliage height. So the greater the height of the vegetation, the more species richness were present, the more bird species, excuse me, were present. But Patchiness or heterogeneity is also an important factor when looking at the diversity of birds in savanna habitats. For example, these two habitats taken from the same site generally or the same area. One habitat is dominated by grasslands, the other habitat is dominated by patchy shrubs or low trees. And we must remember that because birds are quite mobile vertebrates, uh, if there is a mosaic of habitats, so patches of woody vegetation interspersed with grassy savanna, it's more likely to, to have a greater number of niches, and this will then promote 
diversity. So certainly what we do find at this particular site, which is uh, in fact in a rather dry part of South Africa, is that bird species diversity is much higher on the slopes where the habitat is rather patchy than it is up on the top where there's very few um, larger or structurally patchy habitats in the grassland which you see on the left hand side. But despite this patchiness, the effects of woodland and so on, we do find specialization in the savanna habitat when it comes to birds. If you consider, for example, that in the lark family, an example is the clapper lark, which you can see on the stone in the picture, this family in Africa is far more abundant or has far more species than anywhere else in the world. And lark species are primarily grassland, and some may consider them savanna specialists. In southern Africa alone, there are 25 different lark species, so they certainly tend to do quite well. Right, now let's have a look at some of the other important groups of birds which we find in savanna habitats. Quite obviously, we have one of the birds, uh, the world's largest living birds in the form of the ostrich on the top left there, which can get up to about 100 kilograms. It's flightless and it used to occur all the way up into the Middle East, but is now eff effectively only found in Africa. <clears throat> the secretary bird, another important African species, um, only occurs in, in Africa. It's about four kilograms, um, but there have been some fossil secretary birds uh, found in France. In terms of the raptors, um, these include birds such as the eagles, the hawks, the buzzards, the kites and the vultures. This um, group is made up of relatively large birds and the majority of the, the birds have females that are larger than males. And we find about 220 um, species within this family, uh, sorry, 210 species within this family worldwide. And about a quarter of those, about 52 species in Southern Africa alone. And, and you can see in this slide, you've got a white back vulture and a black shouldered kite, just two examples. But there are other species as well, jackal buzzard on the top left, batelier, which is French for acrobat, very common in uh, many parts of the, the savanna. And then you have other birds, um, long-legged birds, such as the goshawk, the pale chanting goshawk, which you can see on the bottom right. There are also a range of spurfowl and guinea fowl or game birds in, in Africa and savanna habitats. And these are generally um, relatively medium to large size ground birds. Um, we find the helmeted guinea fowl, the one on the top left, is restricted to Africa and, and Madagascar. And generally these sorts of birds, we've got a Franklin or a Spurfowl down on the right, feed on seeds, bulbs and, and insects. But they, they're very, very uh, obvious birds, also quite often quite vocal birds in the savannah. In terms of the cranes, here we have South Africa's national bird, the blue crane, uh, on the left-hand side. And then these birds are, are large. They occur throughout the world, uh, but there are only three species in, in Southern Africa, the blue crane being one of them. And then we have uh, the bustards and the korhans. They're also pretty large birds. The kori bustard, which is the, the larger bird on the right, gets up to about 19 uh, kilograms, and it is probably one of the birds, uh, one of the world's largest flying birds. It takes it uh, uh, quite a while to get up into the air. You can think of it as the A380 of, of the savannah. And they're generally open country birds that feed on, on a range of, of species, but uh, small vertebrates and insects tend to be the most uh, important groups uh, in their diet. We then have the sand grass and the doves, sand grass on the, on the left there, medium sized birds, we find them all over the world, four species in southern Africa, but uh, particularly this double banded sand grass and also, well more, more particularly in the Namaqua sand grass, which we see in some of the drier parts of South Africa. They're 
belly feathers are adapted to um, be soaked in water and this is actually a way that they carry water back to their chicks back at the nest. The pigeons and doves, very, very cosmopolitan group. We find them worldwide and uh, only about 15 species in, in South Africa, but, but approximately 210 worldwide. So so a very cosmopolitan um, group, but not very well represented necessarily in the savannas of, of Southern Africa. We spoke about the larks earlier. These are, are small birds, but about a third of them, the world's um, a third of the world's lark species are present in Africa, and this really does underscore the importance of savanna habitat in their um, radiation and speciation. Another group of what we like to call little brown jobs are the cysticulars, um, the uh, generic uh, epithet of cysticula, and very small, generally dull birds that glean insects from um, the from bushes that they sit on. And they generally, well, often found in grassland and, and certain habit, uh, savanna habitats across southern Africa. Pipits, another group of birds that are very dull in coloration, pretty small, generally live in grassy habitats and they're, they're mostly brown and white, very difficult to identify in the field, uh, but they are relatively common in savanna habitats. You then have a very interesting group, uh, the oxpeckers, which are in the starling family, and that's an example of the red-billed oxpecker there on an impala. And they, they are smallish birds that are found almost exclusively in savanna habitats. Uh, and they use various hosts, giraffe and white rhinos are their preferred hosts, and they tend to feed on ticks, so external parasites, but they are known to also feed on the blood of an individual if it has a, has a wound on its side or on its body somewhere. Now let's turn our attention to some of the unique savanna species. <clears throat> One of those groups is the Tarakos, or as they're known in South Africa, the Luris. And, and these are very interesting birds. They're medium to large birds, unique to Africa, only found in Africa. Um, and interestingly in this group, the majority of the birds are forest dwellers, but we do have the grey go-away bird, which is almost exclusively found in savanna habitat. And it is one of the characteristic calls of savanna, or sounds of savanna, when you're out in the savanna bushveld. Wood hoopoos, uh, another classic savanna species, only found in Africa, south of the Sahara. Uh, these are, um, they used to be called red-billed wood hoopoos or um, green wood hoopoos. They are gregarious, so they live in groups. And they have these long, red, decurved bills, which they use to um, flick off pieces of bark to find uh, insects and grubs that might be underneath the bark on, on trees. And they have a characteristic uh, call, which uh, sounds like uh, a bunch of laughing women when they uh, start to call. The mouse birds, or uh, colidae, small birds with very, very long, well, quite long tails, tails longer than their bodies. They're unique to Africa, and they, they generally feed on buds and, and fruit. There's six species in Africa. Three of them can be found in, in South Africa. That's the red-faced mouse bird. And they're called mouse, mouse birds, um, it's believed, because of one of two things. They, uh, well, three things, in fact. They, their feathers are very, very soft, and when you have the bird in the hand, it feels like their feathers are, are almost uh, feel like they are fur or this is a bird which is covered in fur, so that, that's one idea. Of the other obvious one is that they have these long tails like mice, so they have long tails that are um, make them look like mice. Uh, and then they have these uh, very, very um, strange feet, and they tend to kind of scuttle around and hang upside down in trees and branches, and, and uh, it, it might be because of that that they're called mouse birds, but they're a very interesting group and have this characteristic... Uh, Cave, as it were, that sticks up on the tops of their heads when uh, they are alarmed. So they, they erect the feathers on their head. The widers are another classically um, African group, and they're only found in, in Africa, south of the Sahara, and 80% of the species are found in South Africa. They're seed eaters, you can see from the, the beak of this animal, and the males tend to have very long tails to attract females. 
We then have the shrikes. There's two examples there, the common fiscal shrike and the redback shrike. Redback shrike is an intra-African migrant. You can see from their beaks that they tend to be relatively uh, voracious predators, feeding on insects, also small vertebrates, uh, and so on. Uh, and they are characterized by being a, a group of, of birds that tend to uh, perch and then swoop onto their prey. So they'll, they'll use sometimes the same perch over and over, and then they'll swoop down to catch their prey. In terms of the aerial foragers, we've got swallows and martins, and there are a number of examples which you, you can see listed on this slide. Um, but the important thing that I'd like you to take away from this is that, that martins, on the bottom right, tend to be brown and, and white in color, whereas the, the swallows tend to have at, at least some uh, kind of metallic blue plumage that you can see at least in, in parts on parts of their, their bodies uh, and um, the the martins are, are often um, associated in, in terms of the rock martin with buildings and the brown throated martin over water some of these are, are species that stay in South Africa and Africa for the whole year, all year round. Others migrate into Africa and others still like the barn swallow migrate all the way up to, to Europe during the Southern African winter. We then have some characteristic bush birds. Uh, these are often known as bush shrikes. Um, very melodious in some cases. In the case of the book Mercury, it's cool where it will duet with its partner. They also have some characteristic displays like the puffback, which erects the feathers on the back of its, of its rump and gives it a bit of a fluff ball or a snowball looking um, plumage. And then we have more skulking birds like the southern boo-boo and the southern chagra that uh, tend to skulk around in the undergrowth and, and search around for, for insects mainly as their main prey. So, if we recap this lecture, don't forget that savannah dominates the African continent. It's the structure and complexity of savannah which will impact bird diversity the most. And there are several bird groups that have clearly specialized in the savannah. An example could be the pipits. And most of the successful bird groups in, in savannah habitats are either insectivorous herbivorous or carnivorous. And this is because Africa exhibits a huge amount of diversity in terms of its insects, plants, and herbivorous mammals. In terms of the herbivorous mammals, you would have heard about that in the previous lecture. Why is that, you may ask? 